One of the things I think this rifle does an excellent job of is just making it easy to get the bolt out. Uh, now, keep in mind, if your scope is really low, this trick might not work, uh, but don't do that, and then you can just, you can get the, the, the bolt out. I mean, the, the comb on this thing uh, is built for the iron sights, so you might need to add some cheek piece here anyways. So don't try to get your scope so low that it's going to, to get in the way of this, because uh, this is a really nifty trick. Uh, it's got a pin in the back, just um, just like some of the AKs out there would, uh, would have. Uh, you push that pin in, and then pull that plastic bit off. That's your uh, uh, dust cover. And then we're given access to this back area here. That has a recoil spring with a dog leg on it, just like an AK or a Type 81 or whatever you want to call it. Uh, while this might look like it's firing pin, this is just a guide rod and a, and a recoil spring there. Uh, next, what we're able to do is pull this all the way to the rear, pull the charging handle out. Charging handle has a little hole in it. That goes with that, uh, uh, that guide there. And then the bolt comes right out the back. So you can see it angles up a little bit there. So if your scope again comes down below this level, that's where you're not gonna be able to pull the bolt out. And that, uh, that would really be a disadvantage because I think this rifle design is really neat. And I think the ability to get the bolt out is this quickly uh, with an Allen key or something pokey to get in there is, uh, is a pretty good uh, uh, feature. Now the bolt itself um, is kind of unique looking because it's uh, it's it's rectangular, <laughs> which isn't normally for how uh, how these guns are set up. But uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, one thing that uh, I have heard from other Savage A22 owners is that the uh, the pin that holds in the firing pin can sometimes shear. Now it looks like this one's got a solid pin. Uh, I believe there is a roll pin in here somewhere, or maybe that's the one that was replaced. Uh, with this newer style pin because that one was having problems with uh, with shearing and and once that's sheared, boy, boy, you've got some problems with the with your bolt. But uh, um, that looks like it's been replaced by one that is easy to push out. Um, and, and the reason why you'd want to get to your bolt for a, a semi-auto 22 is that 22 LR is dirty, and you do need to clean your bolt face every once in a while. It's uh, every few thousand rounds, that kind of thing. So very easy to do with the Savage A22. Now. Uh, we don't need to take it down any further than this. We could clean the bolt off, give this stuff a swab, maybe clean out the ejection port a little bit just to get the, some of the crud out of there. Um, but if you want to take it down further, you can. Uh, we just need to take our 5, 30 seconds uh, Allen key, uh, which is pretty standard for a Savage. We've got one Allen key in the, uh, in the top here, just at the tang. And it's a short little guy. And then we also have one at the front, just where the magazine release goes. And it's a longer guy. Once those two action screws are out, we'll just need to take that safety and kind of schmiggle her into the middle there somewhere. And then we should be able to pull our barreled action apart from our stock. So not much going on inside the stock there. One cool thing that I think is, uh, is worth mentioning is look at this channel up at the front. The barrel channel has like a plastic sheath that goes in there just to kind of clean up the lines in there and make it look neater, which is kind of neat, I guess. When it comes to our barreled action, we have a plastic uh, unit housing our trigger, and then we have the uh, barrel itself. This is actually very easy. There's a little pin here. I'm just going to press in a little bit, and hopefully I can snag it from the other side. Oh, I can. Look at that. Uh, so there's that pin at the rear. With that pin out, this guy just pops right off. So there's that uh, that trigger assembly. Again, we can clean this off and, and give it a, a, a quick scrub. Um, but look at how easy, <laughs> look at the access we get to the inside of the receiver now. So this is going to be really easy to get some uh, uh, paper towel or, or rags or whatever and, and give this a wipe out or get access to that breech face and clean out where that extractor goes just to, uh, just to get that breech face nice and clean. Overall, I'm... Uh, I'm done this way faster than the Savage 64. <laughs> and actually, even even this dis disassembly is so much better than most of the 22s on the market. Most of the semi-auto 22s are not that easy to disassemble. I took apart two screws and I pushed out one little pin and I'm fully disassembled here. So that is something special and something that, uh, that Savage has done really well on this rifle. So to reassemble, this is kind of hard for me to see because I've got some bright lights. I'm just going to schmiggle that guy in there. And there's this post at the back here has to fit in with a recess that's in that uh, that receiver there. There we go. I can feel it just went in. I'm just going to very carefully hold it just like that. I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to push it in from one side to the other. And 
Now that's staying on there. One quick thing I want to show you just before I get too far. This thing's pillar bedded. So there's a metal sleeve going around the front and rear uh, holes where the action screws go in. And the advantage to that is that you can torque them down. Once you hit steel, it stops. It stops where that uh, where that action screw goes. So you're, you're not going to crush this plastic uh, because you're crushing metal and <laughs> that's kind of hard to do. Uh, and it allows you to get that torque on there without uh, doing any damage to it and uh, uh, without uh, giving some good consistency to it as well. So uh, let's go ahead and pop that back on there. If you run into any resistance, don't force it. You probably, your safety may, might need to be moved a little bit just so it can fit in between. Uh, and then just keep moving it until you hear it click into place. Then you can start uh, putting your screws back in. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that uh, action screw on the front. Next, I'm going to throw the action screw on the rear. That one does come with a little lock washer. Just chuck that onto the bolt and if it came off it for you even. And then secure it just behind the tang there. Grab your bolt, pop it back into its rectangular slot in the receiver there. Grab your charging handle. You'll want those holes aligned front to back when you're popping it in. Next up comes the recoil spring. It goes into that hole in the back of the bolt there. And just use that leg and put it on the shelf that's kind of in front where it can rest there. Finally, take your rear dust cover, put the tab underneath there. And I like to just kind of put a little bit lower, push that pin a bit and then snap it in place. And you should be able to visually verify that that plastic pl pin is in place on the dust cover. So uh, that this is <laughs> this is way faster than a lot of other guns I try to do. Uh, finally, make sure that your chamber is empty. Test, test it for functionality. So check that the bolt hold open works. Check that the safety works. I can see that, yeah, the safety is working. Safety's off and the trigger fires. I hold the trigger down. I pull it back. I check for reset. Reset works, and the trigger works as well. So uh, we are back to functional on this rifle.